certainly heating up here as per usual in Apex South. Would you expect anything different? The answer is no. Gaming Gladiators now go up against Wildcard. This matchup has huge implications at this point. The fact that Wildcard still, there, there is a, a ridiculous outside chance. We've just done the math. There is a ridiculous outside chance that they could end up on 12 points and still have an opportunity to go to the Berlin Major. Whether that happens or not, we'll kind of move away from that conversation because it could <laughs> be a mess. But Gladiators, let's just talk about them for a quick second here because, guys, this roster has, they have blown us away. Yeah, they really have. The second stage for GG has been a huge, huge step up, and they now find themselves in a very privileged position where if they win tonight, they absolutely bolster their chances of making the top two and qualifying for the major. So yeah, I've been really impressed with what we've seen from this team, and um, particularly from Joe last week. I think that interview was really insightful just to how far this team has come and uh, their ability now to actually have confidence heading into games. They've gotten over that initial hump of entering Apex South and the nerves that come with that. And with that freedom, they've been allowed to play their brand of Siege. And I've got to say, so far in the second stage, it's been very successful. Well, their brand of Siege has really enabled one player in particular to shine. Ape has been absolutely phenomenal, especially when you consider the matchups that he's been uh, pretty much through in the last five games. Obviously, played A6, this could all change, but Xenox, mm. I mean, coming into what has been, a, you know, I would say a tumultuous 2022, a, a lot of ups and downs for a lot of teams, a lot of individuals standing up. Ape has been one of those players that I think, like uh, Gladiators themselves, have kind of shocked us with their performance. Yeah, certainly. I mean, Ape was not a bad player in Stage 1 either. Uh, 0.9 rating, only minus 5 on the KD, and surprisingly actually keeping the same minus 4 entry. But um, yeah, obviously a really, really solid player and I think has been able to thrive in a team environment because that's kind of the way I view gaming gladiators. I know obviously we got the player spotlight onto Ape, but this is a team. This is a team of five players and that's why they're contending for a spot at the Berlin Major. There's not, you know, two players that are the kind of the standout stars and then the rest are all the supporting cast. You need everyone on this team fit and firing if they're going to find success. So, you know, it's not just down to Ape. It's not just down to one player. Uh, I, I think this is a team that just needs everyone firing on all, all cylinders. Of course, they can't confirm their spot tonight now uh, with the results that we just had in the Knights Die Wolves game. Uh, had Die Wolves actually won that game, then a win here for GG would have secured them a spot at the major. It can't happen now, even if they get all three points. Uh, obviously setting up what's going to be a, a wonderful match in Play Day 7 with the Knights. That's it. There's three points. <laughs> three points at the end of all of this is going to I think just make or break so many opportunities. Speaking of opportunities, it's been handed to them on a silver platter time and time again. Wildcard for the flaws that they've had of 2021, guys, we thought maybe they had shrugged it off coming into stage two. They had some phenomenal performances, but unfortunately, three losses. Knights, IG, and Elevate now mean that this squad is probably the the most outside chance to make the major. Yeah, it's certainly been a, a, a sort of weird trajectory for Wildcard because I, I would back them in um, when they've looked better throughout this stage. It's been a big improvement to stage one. It's yeah. been the best we've seen them, but it hasn't been consistent enough. It hasn't been um, across as many play days as they would have liked and what they would need to be challenging for the top two seriously. Um, and heading into the play day off the back of the, the that last result, um, Knights and Diables, they probably know at this point that their chances are... I don't want to put a number on it, but I just, I'm assuming it's like less than 1% at this point. <laughs> they need to win three points here and hope that basically the next, what, seven or six games <laughs> in the next two weeks go their way. So, yeah. look, hopefully they can have a bit of motivation here to just keep kicking on. Um, I know they've been joking a little bit. I think it's Cairo saying that basically it's impossible for them to make the major, but that they can make it possible potentially. or Whatever the line was, I can't remember exactly word for word. But, uh, yeah, hopefully Wildcard have that flame still, and we can see them at their best this evening. Well, flame's all about wildcard. We'll wait and see whether they've got it up against what is an improving roster week by week. The most important part of all of this, of course, the map. Surely we do not, okay, good. I'm so glad we didn't see another border, but we do go to Clubhouse here, Xenox. 
Uh, something that I am very familiar with with Wildcard, but I haven't really looked into for Gladiators. Well, Gladiators have not played it in Apex South this That's stage. Right, yeah. So, yeah, they're obviously going to be showing it for the first time today, which means it's hard to make comment. You know, we don't quite know whether or not they're going to be quietly confident with this. Now, it's not a map that they say, you know, ban out quite often. That map uh, is usually the likes of Oregon, Villa, Bank. So Clubhouse is something that they're more than okay with letting slide through, obviously even choosing it against Cafe there, which they have played. They lost that one to Elevate. Uh, but obviously for Wildcard, I, I think they should feel somewhat confident here on Clubhouse. Surprisingly, if they've not really played it a whole lot in recent times, the only game that they did play it in was the OCS Finals back in May, and it was a 7-0 over Team Bliss Rob. So besides that, the rest of the calendar year, they've not played Clubhouse. So we've got actually a map here that two teams in recent times have not a whole lot of history on. Guz, how does that make you feel? Going into a, a very important matchup, I guess for both of these teams, but you know, we, we haven't seen a hell of a lot of it. Are you worried? Well, it's, it's so hard to have an informed opinion, right? We're going in basically as blind as the players are. There's no yeah. new VODs to review. Um, in terms of the, the band statistics, I guess we can extrapolate that a little bit, that both of these teams have a band against them more frequently than they ban it themselves, but it's not a big discrepancy. So it's so hard to get a read on this. Um, and that match for Wildcard against Bliss and OCS, the whole series was a stomping. So you can't even take any anything away from that. It was so long ago anyway. Um, but always keen to see Clubhouse, especially with the way the meta is playing out at the moment, especially on attack as well. You can do some pretty wild bans to spice things up, right? You could exchange a Thatcher for a Finker or something along those lines and also try to dial down the aggression on the defense as well. And on a map like Clubhouse, that can open things up significantly. I'm looking forward to this one. This one has the potential for Wildcard to make their own history, to potentially give themselves an opportunity in the final play day. But the players are ready, the casters are ready, but more importantly, we, the audience, are ready. Devin Manny to run you through all of the action. Enjoy. Thanks. I have no doubt that we will, Rob. This is once again a battle for the Major, but the difference is Gladiators have it all on a silver platter. Their destiny is within their hands. If they win this week and next week, they go to the Major. But for Wildcard, they need everything to go their way. Mandy, I'm still reeling after Game 1. I hope you've recovered because we've got another game to cast. Yeah, I mean, I just... I can't believe that game one. That was so hectic. We haven't seen a border quite that scrappy in a really long time. And now we're going to go from border to casting Clubhouse, <laughs> Deb. I'm not sense. sure if my brain can keep up with these players. <laughs> There's All right. just so much diversity. Well, we're not going to get the absolute pure undiluted chaos of border this time around. We get a little bit more of a methodical, hard breach centric Clubhouse. But as Guz was prefacing on the desk, these days, you can get some spicy bands in there. You can get things a bit different. Not a Thatcher, that's as vanilla as it gets. But I mean, I'm hoping that we'll see something a bit left to feel that these guys are throwing out there to try and make the major. And the first band to go out as well for the Gla for Wildcard actually will be Thatcher. That means that Maverick will be left in, assuming they don't ban it here. Hibana to go out next as well. So Maverick will stay in, which is a pretty standard game of Clubhouse here. We see it in fashion nowadays, getting that wall open with Maverick is a lot more consistent than trying to play the juggle game with the Thatcher and the Bandit. Kai to be taken out as well does make sense once the Thatcher is out. Some of those Kai claws can be pretty pesky on the hatches. Is Azami going to make it in? Are we going to get to see Azami on rafters? We are. Oh, Valkyrie Ooh. goes out. So, well, guys, look, I loved your point about seeing some funky bands, but <laughs> this is about as stable yeah. as it gets for Clubhouse. Ibana Ben, Thatcher Ben, uh, Kaid and Valkyrie going out. But it has left a lot of really powerful ops in. I'm thinking mostly about that as army, particularly for the top floor. We talked in game one about Sage from Knights, how he loves to play rafters with his army. We might see that if we go to CCTV. But first up, it looks to be a bit of a roam here from Wildcard on the basement bomb site. And I'm actually pretty pretty curious to see that Wildcard actually left in the army. Historically, they've been the ones to ban it out. They don't seem to really like it on their defending half. But Defense as the stage has gone on, we've seen more and more teams pick it up and be comfortable with it. That being said, it's not going to be in this particular round. Wildcard will take us down to Church and Arsenal, playing an extended roam through all all uh, three floors. Vinny will reinforce one hatch. Castle Barricades will go to support that top floor hold. And we'll probably see one of the hatches on the ground floor open to the anchors. Um, so all the roamers can rotate back onto site with the anchors. It's a long time since I feel like I've used the word SSG roam on Clubhouse. 
Don't say it. Oh, I already Don't did. I already did, Mandy. I can't take that one back. Well, how how would you describe it in your professional opinion, right? Like, you know, however many years it's been since uh, SSG were the team that innovated this room on Clubhouse, how have things changed? Well, I think things have changed a little bit because recently Siege has been a bit more, I, I suppose, cut off -y. That's a really bad way of describing <laughs> it, actually. But, but there's a lot more focus on flushing players out and playing like a probe style attack rather than this like one, two, three clearing type of thing. And so I feel like this like extended roam has a lot of permutations to it nowadays that you can't really call the SSG roam anymore. Like yep. I feel like there are so many intricate details that people have changed now that it's like, it's a bit more special. Each team has got their own version of it, you know? This is the wild card clubhouse. This right. is the wild card one. And this is the game in Gladiators Clubhouse Clear. You can see on it. A bit of alliteration there. Ape is Ooh. on the top floor. He's actually got a little bit of a rotate hold top red. Already a lot of information and a lot of map control gained here by the Indonesian team as wild card start to fall on back. Two players still reside on this top floor as Joe's trying to breach this jacuzzi wall. Beautiful cutoff as well from Joe, knowing that wildcard players will be falling back through the main stairs as Pat is supposedly trapped now in logistics. One way is cut off, and there could be another potentially as the entry comes through from Pot. You can see how wildcard are really happy to just stay in position even after being droned. They don't lack any confidence whatsoever, but OJ starts to fall on back. It was that main stairs castle barricade that was the cue for wildcard to fall on back. Since there's still so much drone denial, including Vincere, who's on that vigil, still using his ERC-7 disruptor, it just means that it's going to take a bit of time for Gladiators to actually drone out and clear the whole map. And only a minute and 20 seconds left in the round as well. Pat will still be contesting on the main stairs, but will fall off once the Gaming Gladiators start to put some pressure on him. The Fuse is actually going to be utilized by the Gaming Gladiators to try and clear out some of the misutility on the basement floor. It goes in, doesn't connect onto any players, but it does mean that this hatch will be easily opened by the Glenn Gladiators. I do love, see, love seeing a bit of fuse, a bit of innovation. Oh, but the impact is there from Milo. No Hibana means that you've got to make sure you've got your hard breach in check to be able to open up these hatches. There's actually no more uh, hard breach charges from the fuse and only two Selmas from Ace. So he would have to land both of those to open that hatch. And that's pretty tricky as well on the side of Gaming Gladiators. That means they can only have one hatch open, I suppose, unless Joe is able to get another thing with his Maverick Torch, but I highly doubt it. And they're actually going to choose to get open the Moto hatch instead of the Kitchen hatch, Dev. This would indicate to me maybe the Gladiators going for a triple take into Church instead of trying to make their take into... Oh, the, my oh, God. Oh, hatch drop, but I think the Execute's already happening. It's a blue take, Mandy. It's blue, and they've all flooded on through. Wildcard try to recompose, but Vinny cannot stand up to the pressure. It's all on OJ now in a one versus three. Time's ticking away. If he could deny the plan here, he could win the round, but it's not going to happen. Ape had a fantastic round with the Finca. And that is a very explosive start to the game from Gladiators. And I was still sitting here trying to figure out what they were going to do, and it was happening. It was happening in front of our eyes. <laughs> What a chaotic round, what a chaotic finish to the round even from the Gaming Gladiators, eventually able to make their way through blue once they realised they couldn't get any hatches open, the time was dwindling away, someone found an in onto blue, I suppose that because all of the operators are roaming type operators, there's going to be no utility left on blue, right? There's no barbed wire for the stairs. There's no cams to watch it. There's no ADSs to protect the person behind Boiler. So for the attacking half, it is made a lot easier to try and find an in onto a power position like Blue, which is normally very hard to contest, right? And so once a Gladiators player was in, all of them were able to follow. And before we knew it, before we knew it the execute was already going down. I like how we said, oh yeah, we're moving from Border onto Clubhouse. So this will be a little bit more normal, a little bit less chaotic. And then we were treated to that explosion 5v5 in about 30 seconds where gladiators just made a 5v5 exec yep. work it actually reminds me of um what was the game we were watching recently on skyscraper was it gladiators versus direwolves i think so the number of rounds that gladiators in like a 5v5 or a 4v4 would just go ah, push and they would just flood in through these choke points and frag out um that's one of the big strengths of this team sometimes they don't overthink it they just they just send it, and they're so good at brute forcing those areas. Told you on the fuse had two kills on a one-speed operator. No think, just do. <laughs>
I mean, I'm not trying to undervalue what they're doing, of course, but hey, it was meant to be a compliment. <laughs> the gladiators now will start to make their way in. They will be attacking gym and bedroom this time though, and so a map sweep seems to be the way that they are going for. OJ, they will be holding the top of red stairs with the shield, a runegates, and will my charges to protect him as the gladiators slowly make their way into garage. The uh -oh. breach goes open, first impact trick misses, but the second one seems to connect onto that Selma. Interesting method from Milo of trying to deny that wall. Oh my god, the vertical nade almost claims his life. Lucky to be oh. alive. The second one as well! Poor Milo feeling the pressure now, so low on HP. But he still the stands. Floor lava. It, <laughs> <laughs> the floor is lava. I didn't know they added that into Siege, but there you go. And the opening kick is once again the Gladiators. A little bit more early this time, but they have so much map control already. And this extension is not working out. I actually don't know about that map control there, Dev. They're still trying to toy with Milo here. He's been taken so low, he even finds a pick, but Joe is able to find another one back still in the man advantage for the Gladiators. Map control seems kind of sparse, mm. but Tolji will start to make a way in. Still OJ playing the top of red stairs, feeling the pressure. He's going to rotate down, sprints on, run! Downstairs, as far as he can get. To hopefully try and support Cairo back on site as soon as possible. If Gladiators know about the fact there's only one on site, they might flood. They play it slow and steady. They don't want to overextend and potentially be punished for it. Now the Gladiator is pretty happy with the map control they have. We'll start to put some pressure out on this balcony instead to try and choke out some of these anchors. Cairo in particular stuck now in bathroom. As the breach goes open, windows are also open. There's no way that he can get out from this position and he'll have to play his life. 45 seconds left to go as Holvan starts to make his way into Logi as well and the onslaught of the Gladiator starts to come through. Good first pick though from OJ. The trade, no! Ooh. OJ, he finds yet another one! This has turned from a two versus four to a two versus one now, but Joe makes it a one on one. His teammate down, but not out. OJ might claim all four kills in this clutch. There's surely no way that Joe can pull off this revive. He goes for it. Is OJ aware? Can he see the back? He gets the first one now, just finishing off the down player. But Tolji, straight off the res, gun up and ready to shut him down. Such a close round for Wildcard, almost having that one in the bag. The extension over to CCTV and Cash seems so successful to them. They were able to find so much value. Even OJ was able to get away with his life and have such an impact through that mid to late game. But in the end, the game in Gladiators, they play out the trays. They do their due diligence on the entry through logistics and able to close out the round in the end. Works out for them. Gaming Gladiators, what a methodical push from them, and it works out in their favor, and Wildcard just losing out here in these micro battles. And as a result, Gladiators are up 2 nothing. on... Uh, I mean, I, I don't know whether this is really a map favored towards one team or another. I know the guys prefaced on the desk talked a bit about Wildcard playing this at a national level, but hard to read into that. What we do know is that Gladiators yes. are currently in second place on the standings. Destiny lies within their own hands for going to that major. We might have seen Knights pull off a, a great 7-5 earlier today, but Gladiators can still jump over Knights here. And of course, the two teams play each other next week. Those are the two that we're likely looking at for second place, assuming Elevate takes first. Gladiators, they can handily do away with Wildcard here. They put their best foot forward into that game next week. And I think that's being pretty well reflected in the server as well. The Gladiators have a very clean opening two rounds. Both attempts from Wildcard have been unsuccessful. They're going to go back down to Church and Arsenal, but with a different philosophy this time. They're not going to play this extended roam through all three floors anymore. They're going to play something a little bit more reserved as Arpe once again will make his way into the building through Garage. Fairly common entry, but left with not as much contestion on the top floor this time. The dangerous thing for wildcard here is if they're playing a time delay run well they've got a kill so that's better than just a bit of time delay what an aggressive c4 up through the logistic hatch my point was that if wildcard just try and burn time we've seen gladiators are really good at, at late round executes even when they don't have time so it makes it a bit concerning for wildcard but at least they have an opening pick and taking down oh, the maverick no. is oh dear 
Taking down the Maverick is a very important pick as well for the side of Wildcard. That leaves a lot of options closed up now for the Gladiators. They have to dedicate two Selma Charges instead of just one on the side of Rix if they want to get hatches open. And one of Tolji's tin can openers has also just been shot out by Wildcard. So the mid round is starting to close in on itself here for the Gladiators as they make their way through the building. And they'll have to come up with something a little bit more creative if they want to get an in onto the Wildcard anchor setup. Last time around this site really depended on the execute from Blue from Gladiators. They weren't able to get the kitchen hatch open, so they really didn't have any choices, did they? And that's why I'm a bit worried that Fuse told you used one of his uh, hard breach charges on that soft hatch. Like, just get Sledge to come do it. Just have a spare uh, breach then for the kitchen hatch. Like, you might have more options in the late round. Attackers have located a bomb. And now Gladiators seem to just be trying to find an in where they can. They're trying to get open what hatches they can. The final tin can opener goes on the moto hatch instead. Pretty similar to the last round. It doesn't seem like they're going to be touching kitchen at all. But now the diffuser is actually going down the main stairs. So a triple take seems to be the way to go for the Gladiators. But the time is ticking away slowly. Oh, and the mute jammers are stalling out these Selmas from the ace. Not to mention, there's also shields in sight. Wildcard have such a good setup. Only 29 seconds left to go in the rounds, and blue again will be the point of contestion. But this time, there is a lot more utility for the Gladiators oh, to deal with. Might not matter if Arpeg oh. can do that! He gets the oh. triple kill! Where did that come from, says Wildcard, as they drop like flies? They will have to step up hugely there, but Pat! He gets the double, and Vinny to find the other. What an explosive round there from Wildcard. What on earth was that? We were getting so hyped up for Wildcard, and we said, oh, their anchor set up so good. The Gladiators are so tough for them. <laughs> then Arpe decided to, like, toy with our hearts and get a 3k there in the round to completely throw a point out the window. Then Pat decides to toy with our hearts even more and bring back two to... I guess our point works out in the end. I'm just going to take that dub where I can. Take the dub where you can, Dev. Take it where you can. You don't know with these Apex Sal teams these days. So, you know what? Wildcard... That was a great defense from them. Eventually, they ran out of time, like you alluded to. Of course, the Gladiators, they make they struggled a little bit in that mid-round. A lot of things were staying closed. They had to sort of make some kind of hero play. The Selmas weren't going out on triple. There had to be a play through blue, which was there, but it didn't work out in the end. Yeah, I mean, strange round. I don't know uh, what to say. <laughs> Explosivity is the name of the game in today's Apex South broadcast, it seems. We've seen a lot of it on border, as you might expect. And perhaps a bit more on Clubhouse than you would expect. The wild card uh, trying to keep pace here, but that's their first round on the board finally. And to be honest, it's a round that probably should have been for Gladiators. So the pressure is definitely on the Aussies right now to step it up because this Indonesian team that only promoted into Apex South six months ago has been wreaking all kinds of havoc in this league. These guys have been playing this league for about as long as I've been casting for in total. <laughs> so that's pretty incredible on their part. They've made a lot of progress kind of in this league as well. Connection a spiritual connection. It's, yeah. it's a psychic connection, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, glad to start to make their way into the building. Joe will be the first to make his way onto the kennel's wall. We'll be able to Maverick trick that as we spoke about. No Thatcher on the board. And so it'll have to be a combination of the Maverick. And I think it's Rix on the Thermite as well. Easy does it. No trick on the wall. Just get off what anti-hard breach there is. And Exothermic Charge will do the job while the rest of the Gladiators shape their way around the Master side instead. Seeing the Izami come out now for Wildcard, but of course Arpez just found an opening pick once again. Gladiators love these LMGs. They've done some serious damage with them. Oh, what a shot though from Cairo. A name we haven't yet said during this game, but the player that always seems to step up for Wildcard. And look at Finney. He's got a sneaky idea here, looking to make a play. Has he been thrown out? Yeah, the information's there and he's a bit worried. Needs to try and get out of dodge, but is it safe to do so? It is not. Can Milo at least make good on for a trade? No, absolutely not. There's Gladiators taking absolutely none of what Wildcard is putting down. And now Cairo realizing that they are in the man disadvantage will try to aggress and find another pick swinging onto the breach, swinging onto the con single wall where Hoven is about to walk through. Running out of the breach? Was that Cairo okay. has just run out of the CZ breach and found someone on the rappel? Anyway, Pat, his play doesn't work, however, leaving Cairo in the one versus three. Now, it's going to have to be an ace up for Cairo as well. And he finds oh. three. 
Oh my god, he's so caught, but he does eventually go down. A valiant effort from Cairo, but not to be. And Gladiators are really extending their lead here. That's a 3-1 advantage. Cairo was too rapid for us. He started running out of the breach in the top down there, and I was like, wait, what? Why is he doing that? And he finds a pick, but eventually the Gladiators were able to win out on, I suppose... What was the very strange cutoff type entry from the master bedroom side of the building? Vinny overstayed his welcome a little bit, even though Wildcard were up one man count. He still tried to play on that reinforcement and eventually gave away his life for it as Hoppen made his entry into logistics. Milo tried really hard to trade one back, but eventually that gunfight didn't go out the way it was. And I feel like that's the story that we've been telling about Wildcard thus far. It just seems like some of these micro battles aren't quite going their way, Deb. Did manage to catch it. Is this a tactical timeout? Is this a technical timeout? Quick pause so a player can reset it. Yeah. Technical timeout. There we go. I was like, why are we. Why would you. Gladiators be taking a tactical pause now? Just a te quick technical break while these guys get their game sorted. But Gladiators have really just had such a strong stage overall. But even this game, you know, they're not letting up. I actually tipped Wildcard today. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Thank I, you. Yeah, I don't, what did you tip? You go Gladiators? I tip Gladiators. Yeah, I feel like that is probably the sensible thing upon reflection. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you look at second versus seventh and it seems obvious, right? But I think a lot of, uh, particularly O's fans, got a bit overhyped with Wildcard because they started their stage really strong. They were on the first place in the standings for a little bit. Um, gladiators were similar. They started strong, but they just didn't seem to taper off like Wildcard did. And that's kind of the strange thing for me like I rate this team never would have expected they'd be going to the major six months in to playing in APAC South though and it is a very real possibility and I think we really doubted the Gladiators run as well right at the start of the stage they were doing so well and then we reflected on it and we went oh but they've played against all the easy opponents they've already played against the Chiefs and Fury and all that kind of thing but nope as the play days went on, they just kept beating teams that we didn't expect them to beat, pulling out results that we honestly couldn't have expected for a team of this like level of maturity and experience. They've only been playing for about half a year together, but still they've come out and shown us some very mature siege. They've shown that they are a team that has some great cooperation and teamwork and a great strap as well that we saw from the last week's game on Skyscraper. Now though, in this tech time, timeout. I can only imagine that this is really on the onus of Wildcard. They've essentially been given a free timeout to chat about what on earth is going wrong because for the Gladiators, these guys look pretty happy. I mean, we can see them. We can see them having a giggle on the face cams at the moment. They seem like they're having a jolly good time. But if you're in camp Wildcard right now, you're probably not quite as happy. No, definitely not. So Gladiators have a lot less pressure on their side they're feeling a lot more confident. They have a fairly extended lead on their attacking side on Clubhouse. Here we see some of the wildcard players. Pat, a lot to think about for one of the strategic minds of this team. One of the leadership positions as well for him. Wildcard need to get their heads back in the game because they have been leaking far too many rounds and letting their major chances slip away. Wildcard need all six points out of the remaining of their two games to even have a chance of making this major and they need to win this game in regulation and their game next week as well in regulation both of those are going to be pretty tall tasks i mean next week their games against the chiefs which in theory should be a bit easier but you just never know and it's certainly not an easy game so far for them against gladiators they just they need to pick it up they, they can't delay otherwise their chance at the major will be gone so this tech timeout has turned into a rehost, so we'll be here for a little bit longer as the players join back into the lobby. But yeah, for Wildcard, it feels like they they got a little bit overexcited, I think. When when we saw them win in the first couple play days of Apex South, we were interviewing Vinny a lot, we were chatting to a lot of the players, and they were pretty they were pretty hyped up. They said that they were in the form that they wanted to be in. But as the stage went on, and I suppose as the teams started to improve along with them, we saw them eventually kind of fall off through the standings, and now their chances of them making the major are incredibly low, especially when you pair them up against the teams that are above them in the standings right now. And so 
being able to make it in, 5% chance, I think, was mm. the statistic on the Spoonie, um tweet today. So they're really clinging on to that 5% if yeah. they want to make it into the major. Yeah. Uh, it's, not, it's not happening. Like, there's no way Wildcard really? can make the major. I don't know. It, I, I've just got up the uh, the stat from Sprubani. 3%. If Wildcard oh, okay. get a regulation win, 3% chance they can make the major. And as uh, Manic was explaining before, everything has to go their way, right? Like, they got to win this game, they got to win their game next week against Chiefs, and then on top of that, it's got to be every other result has to pan out perfectly for them. <sighs> every single game. Well, look, what was the phrase that uh, I forgot what the quote was that Cairo said? It was like the impossible was still possible or something yeah. like that. I don't know. They're going to be clinging on to that. You can't just let go in this game because you've only got a 3% chance of making the major. It's a bit grim. But on the side of the Gladiators, though, I just think that they must be pretty excited going to these final two play days. They can't get too overconfident because if they drop the ball to wildcard, wildcard and their 3%, then it could get out of hand very quickly for their major run. Well, I really feel like Gladiators haven't gotten overconfident. I think... I don't know what Wildcard thought about their chances after they started Stage 2, but um, at least a, I think a lot of people in the community had a lot of confidence. Uh, a lot of us on the casting crew definitely had a lot of confidence in Wildcard, but uh, Gladiators, on the other hand, they came out of nowhere. They've just been so consistent, racking up points just about every single week, and that's the way that you qualify for these majors, right? Like, it's consistency that's key. It doesn't matter if you have, like, a really incredible win over a top team or anything like that. It really doesn't matter. Like, at the end of the day, you've got to beat every single team. You've got to get close to beating every single team. You've got to get points out of every match. You know, Wildcard were the team to break Die Wolves eight-game winning streak, and yet it doesn't account for anything more than beating any other team, right? Like, Gladiators yep. have been so much more consistent. They've only lost what, one game so far, according to the numbers. Oh, two games, Elevate and Invictus. And the Invictus one was in overtime, which gives Gladiators an extra point. Consistency seems like something that is very hard to come by in this league. Every team <laughs> is so unique that you really have to take it week by week. And if there is one or two teams that just play like the bogey teams for a particular for a particular day, the spoiler team, then it's kind of all over, isn't it? And I feel like that's why this league is so unique because we see such a diverse range of teams and strategies. One team has such a particular personality. It's going to be not like any other, like Wildcard. We speak about their formula time and time again. They have the Wildcard formula and it's their personality. And they've been like this for the past like two years or something like that for the Gladiators. They're climbing through the ranks and they're starting to develop their playstyle into the game as well. And I think you could say that for like literally any other team in this entire league. It just feels like it's so hard to pair these teams up against each other because everyone is so unique and you never know who the bogey team is. And every team matches up differently. Like, you know, Elevate's been really consistent beating uh, a lot of teams, but they haven't beaten everyone. You know, they lost to Die Wolves. They beat Gladiators actually quite convincingly, 7-4. Uh, but it doesn't mean that, you know, there aren't opportunities for teams like Gladiators to then go back and beat Die Wolves, to, to go and beat Wildcard. Uh, and even other teams, like you're saying, these teams are playing spoiler. Chiefs beat IG last week. Like, where did that come from? <laughs> Poor Invictus. Their chances of going to the major have basically been shot because of that. Uh, Knights had a similar thing. They lost to Fury. You know, it's just all over the place. Disaster. It is. APAC South is like, like you know those uh, snow globes? It's like you got all the teams in the snow globe and some kid's just been sitting there shaking it up constantly. <laughs> and they never settle. You can't predict it. And we're just sitting there commentating it. <laughs> Wondering what on earth is going on. <laughs> anyway, we managed to get our way back into the game. The scoreline is three and one on the side of the Gladiators as they start to run away with this half. We really turn our attention to Wildcard to try and bring it back on Attackers this defense. Clubhouse, we always used to say, is so much more defender-sided. There's a lot of very powerful positions that you can play in. But this time, Wildcard will be bringing out the mirror. And that's something that we haven't seen yet. I like seeing a bit of mirror. We saw it a little bit on uh, water by Die Wolves, but not too much. Uh, Clubhouse has in stage two with an APAC South been defensive sided, 63%, but only one match played. So it doesn't really count for very much compared to like the most played maps, like your bank. So it's really hard to read into whether this may well end up being an attacker sided game. 
Yeah. I wouldn't count on it. I really wouldn't. I think that Gladiators here have already met par for the course this half. And especially since Wildcard need all three points from this game to go to the Major, like, they, they can't afford to lose any more rounds. They need this to be a 3-3 half. Wildcard need to start their comeback now. And the comeback begins on gym and bedroom if they can make this story happen. One mirror window has gone onto Logi going into Con as well, expecting the Gladiators to repeat the same kind of attack that they did last time they tried to get in. Once again, Arpe will make his way into Garage, but Cairo is there and waiting for him. Will he find this pick? Not yet. Wait in anticipation. Is Arpe going to drone down below? Uh -oh. Is he listening for sound cues? He's being very cautious, but is he going to check downstairs inside of Oil Pit? Cairo hasn't made any noise. Up it has, but he hasn't moved in yet. Cairo is waiting so patiently, but he's not going to get anything for it. And the Gladiators are actually changing their approach entirely in this round. They're not going to sweep from the other side of the map. They're just getting this breach open, one sound will charge on the other side, to prevent any defenders making use of that server window that looks out onto the balcony. Instead, the rest of the Gladiators will pivot their way over to Jacuzzi instead. Rix will put one thermite charge on the wall, open up nice and easy, and is about to be met by the mirror window of OJ. Ooh, Joe's sneaking around downstairs on the nook as well. We've got the Lurker and the Roma around the corner from each other. But Cairo may be spotted. Rix has a drone just nearby. He does indeed see him. And Joe now on the prowl hunting. He will find this kill. There is no doubt about it. But Cairo goes straight back up in the perfect timing. Joe may well backstab him. And that is what we love out of Nook. The operator that everyone associates with being that little sneaky backstab and OJ is about to get a feet full of grenade. He somehow doesn't take any damage, but feeling that pressure now, wildcard are at a numbers disadvantage. And the Gladiators are starting to shape up to figure out what kind of execute they can pull off. They've consolidated all of their players onto the gym side of the map now, this west side of the map, except for Joe, who's sneakily making his way up the Ooh, red Pat. stairs. Oh, oh no! Uh, that could have been disastrous for Gladiators, but they get away with their life. But he seems to know that Joe might be looking for a backstab. He looks oh. away at the wrong time, rounds the corner, and Joe will find another pick for the Gladiators. Oh no, but oh, Arpez oh, no. may takes himself down. At least for the Gladiators, they have told you to drop down the hatch. OJ once again has to clutch. We've seen this before, and he couldn't make it work. The timing is perfect for Gladiators. Told you. Uh, a bit hairy there on the aim, but he does lock it in. That is a 4-1 advantage for the Indonesians. Ooh, this is starting to get a bit exciting. The Gladiators, they seem to be very well versed in these, I suppose, this, these clubhouse attacks. They never commit to an idea that's very obvious and readable. They always get the first couple steps done of an attack and then they pivot and try something else. Whenever we see them attack basement, for example, they always get the first few steps of clearing the map done and then they open up sort of what seems to be some random hatches, but then they end up making a play through somewhere else, exploding onto the site in a place that Wildcard hasn't expected them to. And I'm, that might be down to lack of intel, that might be down to Gladiators intentionally trying to do something a little bit special. But even in that gym bedroom attack, they got open one side of the map. They pretended that they were going to do the sweep like they did the last time they attacked this bomb site, but then they didn't. And they completely changed their attack, went onto the other side, made use of the ground floor. And it really has been throwing Wildcard off because they never know what to expect between each round. Gladiators are just seemingly in an echelon above Wildcard in this game. I don't know if it comes down to the, the map pick or just Gladiator's, I don't know, happy-go-lucky nature. They seem to always be prepared for whatever comes by their way. Like, any stone that is thrown their direction, any curveball that Wildcard have up their sleeve, any flank, any roam, there's an answer. There's always a response. There's always something, and Gladiator's just take it in their stride. 
Now the Gladiators once again will be attacking their way onto the basement bomb site. A pretty similar roam coming out from Wildcard, not the very extended one that we saw in round one or round two, but this time a little bit more reserved, holding onto some of those anchor positions. The aid of the Kiba barriers, some were my charges, some Jaegers, holding onto the key power positions that they need for later into the rounds. The Gladiators, though, are making their same way into the building. Hard Reach goes out onto CC as always, and Ape making his way to the garage. I'm always keeping an eye on these Lurkers for Gladiators. The Lurkers and the entries, they find so many picks. We saw Joe on the Nook last round do it so effectively. We've seen round after round, Ape uh, managed to get those entry picks, these openings as well. In fact, all but one round, Gladiators have found the opening pick. And guess what? Every single round, the opening pick has been converted into a round win. So it it's all hinges on these early exchanges. Now the Gladiators have actually decided not to clear through the map. They've fully pivoted. The Diffuser is inside of Dirt along with Hoven. And they're going to try and make their oh way into the site God. instead. Wildcard though, they figured this out and they rotated all of their anchors back onto the site early. So now all five players on the site will fight the five players of the Gladiators and it's like we're in the late round already. And yet it is not late whatsoever. There's a minute and a half left. Gladiators hoping for a pick here, but they're trying to tunnel vision their way on through. Ape once again does the damage on from Blue. He gets another one as well. No, OJ's taken out his teammate, but it might not matter if Wildcard can hold on. Ricks refrags on into the site. Tolji feels that pressure, takes a lot of damage, but Ricks is there once again. It is OJ yet another time in a clutch situation. He's had his third now presented to him and not a single one he has been able to win. Can he deny the plant? The C4 is just too late. Doesn't even blow it. And he misses his opportunity now. Oh, what a tough position for OJ to be in. Two players to find and it is not gonna happen. The Gladiators storm through on their attack, 5-1. And again, another impressive off-pace attack by the Gladiators. I think that's what I'm going to frame it as now, Dev. It's, it's off-pace. It's not what Wildcard are ready and expected for. In that defense half, Wildcard seemed to have the read on how to play a step-by-step -step defense, right? But the Gladiators, they cut corners where they need to. And in the mid-round, they're able to do some really odd pivots and find timings on entries that Wildcard aren't ready for and frazzled in the comms when it happens, right? We've seen Arpe twice now make Blue the linchpin of the attack for that basement. And by finding those timings and being so fluent and flexible, it's really thrown Wildcard off and the Gladiators have come away with such a dominant half. And in the tactical timeout for Wildcard, and frankly, they look a bit defeated. They are down 5-1. They cannot lose a single more round in this match. Otherwise, the chances of the Major go to zero. They will need six rounds in a row on the attacking side for even a, a glitter of hope at going to the Major. But I think at this point, it's not really the Major that's on the line for Wildcard. It is Pride going down 5-1 on the defense. I mean, if this turns into a 7-1, which it may well, at the pace Gladiators have brought, I mean, that would be a pretty devastating blow to the morale in the wildcard camp, especially going into the final play day. Yeah, for wildcard, this is a pretty tough match. I think that uh, Kyra actually tweeted out a little earlier that they're not really expecting to go to the major off this. They're just trying to do the damage that they can, learn as much as they can from it at this point. So for Wildguard, yes, they'll be feeling disappointed. And this is a game that they'll want to bring back to, just, I suppose, feel pride in what they've achieved so far. But for the Gladiators, I just I just want to bring the spotlight on them for a bit yeah. because this is such an exciting result for them if they are able to walk away from this. This is exactly what they need to go into that next week and try and lock out that points disparity, especially against the Knights, right? That you need that confidence right now. Going to next week is the most important match of the stage to lock you in for that major and now is the time to build that confidence, show what you can on a, on a big official stage so that you can go to the international events. And Gladiator's biggest competitor right now for the major spot is Knights and if Gladiators win this they will have a two point lead over the Knights on 13 to Knights as 11 which really changes the scope of, of the game between Knights because it means overtimes might not matter as much. I haven't done all the maths but just in general, every point matters here in APAC South. And of course, it's not just Knights Gladiators are fighting with. Elevate as well. 
is up ahead, and there's a chance that Gladius could even take first seed out of APAC South. Exciting times, but the game is still going on. We might be able to find out in the next few rounds how this will all play out in the APAC South world. As the Gladiators seem to be doing a very conservative hold here on this basement site, holding onto this top floor and the ground floor, but falling off fairly early and Wildcard make their way into the building. Still is one Roma at the top of main stairs near Jacuzzi Wall. Pyro looking to cut that off. He does see him and does actually take him down on the rotate. Well played from Wildcard, and they do find the opening pick for what feels like the first time in a very long time. But traded back, though, as Hoven is able to claw one wow. onto Cairo Vinny for another, and the man advantage once again in the hands of Wildcard, making their way down to the ground floor now. However, it was Cairo that is taken out, and that is your sledge. That's someone that's very pivotal here and active in this mid round that is now gone. They'll have to rely on the breach charges of Molostica to make some vertical if they're looking for a kitchen execute. Pat now inside of the kitchen hallway as well, trying to figure out what hatches he wants to open up. Actually, Moto is going to be the hatch to be opened might indicate that Wildcard are looking for a triple take going to church rather than dropping the kitchen hatch. It feels oh, actually good as well. Where is this execute going to be then? Because the kitchen hatch is not opened yet. It looks like Wildcard's just trying to open as many options as possible. They do have numbers advantage too, but Gladiators, I mean, even Hoven's considering a flank up through lounge here. Well, the thing is, Wildcard oh, can't open up. up too many options because then, in a way, they kind of close things off as well. Like, if if Milo, I think he's now actually dedicating both the Selma charges to the kitchen hatch. Okay, that means that they can't get triple open anymore. So it basically has to be a kitchen hatch drop at this point or something through dirt. Maybe it's a dirt and kitchen or something like that. Hoven, though, he snuck his way into the ground floor, like you said. Is this going to catch Wildcard off guard? Wildcard know about it, but will Vinny get back in time? He does! He takes him down, only two players left from the Gladiators. Can they deny this plant? Rix goes for the double impact and it does get the down! No way! Gladiators have done it like that! What a plant denial! Two versus four, doesn't matter. Gladiators take match points. Oh my goodness. We definitely could not have expected this way to go the way it is. Wildcard, what has happened? I thought that Clubhouse was going to be a very close matchup, Dev. I was like, okay, <laughs> Wildcard, Clubhouse, Australian teams Not love so. this map. <laughs> Every Australian team is great at this map. They have the formula down. It's always really scary when an Apex South team takes Australian teams to this map, right? But the Gladiators, they've come out of the gates absolutely flying. Like, what on earth is happening for Wildcard? And it's amazing that you know, Wildcard had numbers advantage. Gladiators had a player who flanked and died, and yet Wildcard still couldn't secure that Diffuser. There was no C4, it was the double impact from Rix that denied the plant. And even though Wildcard still had more players alive, they couldn't get it done. They couldn't lock it in, they couldn't refrag those positions. They left it too late, and they didn't have a secure plant. Gladiators now have crushed Wildcard's hopes of going to the Major. If it, there was any hope left, to be frank, after the, the rest of Wildcard stage, Gladiators have put that final nail into the coffin, and now they are looking to secure a very dominant Play Day 6 win going into their final match next week, which would qualify them for the Major if they can win it. Now the Gladiators will take us to gym and bedroom. Tertiary bombsite makes sense now in this final round. Lots of bombsites have been locked out for them at this point in time. Some cheeky frost mats here on rotates as well. And for wildcard, this is looking pretty dire if they want to make their way back into this game. Some pretty unusual operators as well for the Gladiators, by the way. Frost on the board, Thorn as well. The addition of the Azami to spice things up even more. It's it's pretty pretty exciting the way that Club has us shaped out as the new I suppose the new meta of Siege has has come to play. It's very true. The Azami can be used in a variety of ways. Joe, I believe, is playing around Master, trying to dictate some angles using those keeper barriers. Now Wildcard do manage to get the main breach on Jacuzzi open. Cairo is going to be the man to breach this CCTV wall. Tolji at the top of the red stairs, holding onto his position with a magnet to protect him. How long will he be able to hold on for? Because wildcards seem determined to flush this map control. 
and I would agree with you. It seems like a map sweep is going to be the way for Wildcard Rostka, making his way into Garage, opening up this line of sight, ready to cut off Tolji's rotate to go back into Con. Tolji supposedly is now stuck here if someone tries to make his way into Red as Milo holding his angle on the way out. He seems to be aware, however, and a keeper barrier to protect his back. Like that from Joe, supporting his teammate with the utility. The drone goes out, Tolji takes it down. And here a breach may well go onto his wall as well. He rotates out safely. After all that, wildcards still don't get anything for it. They do get map control, however. It's about the only thing they're able to achieve from this. Tolji has stuck himself into a corner behind the timbers, hoping that no one is going to check his angle. Seems like Wildcard have done their due diligence and drone that out, as Pat will now pivot towards the Jacuzzi wall. I think the Jacuzzi wall has already been opened up. That's what they did prior, early into the round. And OJ now putting some pressure on that balcony as well, as Wildcard will start to formulate their execute onto the bomb site. But Harvin goes for a jump out below from the pool window. It goes from bad to worse for Wildcard as Gladiators are on the cusp of retaking second place on the scoreboard if they are to lock out this round. Cairo does find one onto Ape, but Joe is looking to re-aggress onto Con in through Logistic Office. Told you as well, they're going hell for Mel. They're already in Wildcard. Can fight back as best as they can, but Gladiators will not give up. Not ever! It's all under Cairo now in the one versus two, and he cannot get it done. Gladiators, a dominant 7-1 victory in their second last game of APAC South, and they take back second place on the standings. A 3k for Ricks at the end on Frost inside of Bathroom to close out the round. He looks pretty happy chappy as well in the face cams. What a dominant performance on the side of the Gladiators. They had 